stuff. And you know what? If if it does, if we end up with uh, molten core, and then you then you talk about the time for the concrete, you know, to disassociate it. You know that that new rig says it's a couple inches an hour. Um, you know, and of course that Mark One containment is the worst one of all the containments we have. And it's you know it's literally you know the new rig tells you that in a station blackout you're going to lose containment. Okay. You know, there's there's no doubt about it. Uh, they are looking for insights, guidance, recommendations from the NRC for all four spent fuel pools for the uh, Iachi site. Uh, Danchi site, the CHI site. Uh, they believe uh, IEG. Daiichi site, yep, the CHI one. Yep. Unit one and two is boiling down, and unit three and four uh, is having, you know, Zerk uh, water reaction. They believe there is no, essentially, no walls on. Um, Unit three, the uh, the explosion. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Unit four, the explosion uh, leveled the walls, leveled the structure uh, for the unit four spent fuel pool all the way down to the approximate level of the bottom of the fuel. So there is no water in there whatsoever. This is going to progress to the point at which we probably have. We, I think, have to assume at this point that we're going to have three reactors out of control and possibly up to six spent fuel pools. Agreed. I think we need to take whatever actions are necessary to deal with that. That is the message I think we need to deliver to the ambassador as soon as possible. If that involves a general evacuation of U.S. citizens, we need to, we need to instruct that to be done immediately. Does anyone disagree with that? Chairman, this is Admiral Donald at Naval Reactors. I agree with you for your your background. Other other countries. I think right now what we're talking about is the status of U.S. personnel in Japan, uh, not necessarily you know evacuations outside of the, around the facility, etc. If, if we still believe that 50 miles is the appropriate distance, then we can also have that as a, as a message. But I think there's broader U.S. personnel issues that need to be addressed. Yeah, Chairman, this is Bill Fortune. If this happened in the U.S., we'd, we'd go off to 50 miles. That would be our evacuation recommendation. Greg, when you say it's only likely to get worse, not better, and uh, thinking about the general evacuation of U.S. citizens in Japan, I ask once again, how do you, what do you see now as the worst scenario as far as what the uh, impact could be on Japan? Uh, well, at, at this point, I, I would see a worst scenario probably being uh, three reactors uh, eventually uh, having, for lack of a better term, a, a meltdown. Uh, so the, the reactors would likely eventually, you would eventually breach primary containment and have some type of release. Again, it's difficult to predict the magnitude of that release, coupled with potentially up to six spent fuel pools uh, in a degraded condition, possibly with spent fuel pool fires. Those are all significant events. Yeah, it's progressed to at least two reactors, multiple spent fuel pools, and maybe four reactors and four spent fuel pools. So, right. you know, uh, you know that condition is changed. Yeah, remember, yeah. I mean, yeah. Clarity on that. It's, it's our understanding, I think, is the fourth reactor has been defueled, so it's a spent fuel pool. Unit four is the biggest problem. Yeah, and then they lost geometry on that. Right now, um, but I think, uh, I think, you know. Combine that with number two, though, Chuck, for the ambassador, if you get a chance to talk to him again, and that is that um, our recommendations were based upon the conditions at the time and the actions, as well as we knew then that we thought the Japanese may be taking to try to use seawater. But it's obvious over the last number of days that the actions that they took either have been discontinued, haven't worked, and haven't been augmented in any way, and conditions have got worse. So as conditions have got worse, we've had to change our recommendation to make sure yeah, that... This is Bill. Let me interrupt for just one second because I want to make sure that I'm clear when I talk.
correct as a chairman. The, the change in PAR recommendations, I thought, was due to Chuck's understanding about the integrity of the unit four spent fuel pool. Well, and, and uh, go ahead. And, yeah. I think our understanding of the unit four spent fuel pool is it has been destroyed on the side such that they will get no water above the bottom of the active fuel. For in effect, the sides of the reactor building are gone. Whereas before the explosion went upwards and took the top, the pictures lead us to believe that the sides are gone. Right, and and so it's the the in, the new additional source term, which is the unit four spent fuel pool, which is causing us to change our recommendation for protective action. Now that's the worst one, the unit four, because it'll be like that maybe in the long term. The unit three one currently, you know, when we showed up here, they had the metal water reactions going, and the unit ones and twos were boiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bill, this is Chuck. I think. The, the other part of that was we, we've just not seen any mitigation of any of the events, and, and we would just take uh, all the spent fuel poles and probably all the four reactors and to the final conclusion because we've not seen and you know we've not seen any mitigation. Yeah. So you've got right. to assume that it's going to go to the final. Right. Conclusion. Okay. And I understand that. I, I couldn't understand the chairman's focus on Unit Two unless I was misunderstanding what the conver what conversation was going. Yeah, somebody did run a rascal on Unit 2. Yeah, Bill, this is Jim Trapp. It's based on the rascal runs, and the rascal runs we had, remember we had that worst case two days ago, and we had a couple rascal runs uh, done, and, and what it, our rascal run said was worst case uh, Unit 4 fuel uh, that, that was bounded by the Unit 2 meltdown with no fission product barriers. So that's okay. why the chairman remembered that and was more focused on Unit 2. Yeah, but, uh, but I just we want to make sure that no one that takes anything he says as implying that if they resolve the issues with Unit 2, life is going to be a lot better. No. Right? No. 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 They got right. one, three, and four, and maybe yeah. this is likely to go to four, uh, uh, you know, spent fuel pools lost. And, right, and right. Okay. Well, I got it. Does that, does that uncertainty change any of our views about the recommendations? No. Not the fifth. Wow. Okay. But the, the fourth, the, the point number four. Marty, you know what yeah, the number yeah, four I'm, point I'm, is. Yeah, I'm looking at it, and uh, yeah, I would say yes, based on you know, and again, it's, this is based not necessarily on radioactive dose alone. Okay. So you, so you're you're saying you're still comfortable with number four? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks.